There we go. Okay. All right. So, so let's talk about some of these basics here. A matrix is a rectangular array. That's short for an arrangement of numbers. And it's organized in a very specific way. It's got horizontal rows and vertical <coughs> columns. <coughs> so the rows always go this way and the columns always go this way. And that's one of the common things that people will, will forget is the order in which those are, those are indicated. We always say rows first and then we say columns second. And then the entrance or the, the elements, they are the individual numbers. Most of the time we're going to be dealing with numbers in here, but occasionally they're going to be uh, variables. And then the dimensions of the matrix, it's the number of rows, again, always rows first, by the number of columns. And then indices, they're a way that we can use to keep track of what element is where. So they're subscripts that indicate the position of an entry in the matrix. And again, can't say this enough, rows always come before the column. So what we're going to do for each one of these is we're just going to run through and take a look here. It says this is the matrix A. We normally use squared off brackets to indicate that it's a matrix. So this has a row on the top and a row on the bottom. So this has two rows. And it's got one, two, three columns. So the dimensions of this matrix A that we're going to call this, this is a two by three matrix. And the element in the first row and third <coughs> column, so if it's in the first row and third column, we indicate it this way. We do a little one, three. So these are subscript. They're written smaller kind of down below. So if I say A13, it means it's in the first row, third column. So it says what entry is the A21 entry? So A21 would be the second row. So second row and first column, so it's going to be a 1. And the reason is because it's in the second row and in the first column. So for these examples right here, we're going to identify the dimensions and the A21 matrix. So if we look at this right here, it's got one, two rows. Remember, we're counting the horizontal rows first. So this is a two by one, two, three. So this is a two by three, just like the one we did up above. And the A21 entry is second row, first column. So that's going to be a negative three. This next one, again, we count rows. One, two, three rows. So this is a three by one, two, three columns. Because the number of rows is the same as the number of columns, a lot of times we'll call this a square matrix. We still want to find the A21 entry, so we want to find the second row, first <coughs> column. Second row, first column would be a 4. So again, all we're doing is we're just reminding ourselves how these work. This next one and the next couple, a little bit unique. This has 1, 2, 3 rows. So this is a 3 by 1. Because it's only got one column, we call this a column matrix. And can we find the A21 entry? Can we find the second row, first column? We can. That's <coughs> going to be a 16. This one right here has one row, so it's called a row matrix. It's got one row and three columns. And can we find the A21 entry? Can, does it have a second row? So we're just going to put NA, does not apply. If we happen to have a matrix that's completely filled with zeros, we just call that the zero matrix. This one happens to be square, but it's because it's a two by two. And of course, if we go to the second row and first column, the A21 entry is just a zero. OK? Now I'm going to slide down here and talk about a couple of other things. Equality in matrices, matrices, there's a bunch of stuff that can only happen if they're the right dimension. So it says, could these matrices be equal? If, yo, if so, how could they be equal? And if not, why not? So on this one right here, you'll notice that we've got one row and two columns. And this one's one row and two columns. So they could be equal as long as they're equal element by element. So I'd have to make sure that the first element here, first row, first column, matches up with first row, first column here. 
So 2y would have to equal 8. And the first row, second column here would have to equal the first row, second column here. So 6 would have to equal 2x. So these would only be equal if y happened to turn out to be 4. And they'd only be equal if x happened to turn out to be 3. That's what it would take. Take a good look here. This has two rows and one column. So that's a 2 by 1. This has two rows and one column. So because they, they're equal in dimensions, we could have them equal to each other. The only way they'd be equal is if they're equal element by element. So 3x would have to equal 9. And negative 5y would have to equal 15. Now, I'm not going to take the time to solve that. But those ha would have to be equal element and by element in order for this to work out. OK? So this next one, this has <coughs> two rows and one column. This next one has two rows and two columns. So is there any way those could be equal? OK, not equal. And the reason they're not equal is they don't have the same dimensions. So I'm just going to write not same dimensions. OK, now if we're doing arithmetic, meaning adding and subtracting and stuff like that, the rules are pretty darn easy. All we've got to do is keep things organized. They have to have the same dimensions. We need to add or subtract element by element. Okay, And the dimensions of the resultant are exactly the same as the dimensions of the two original matrices. Hey, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. So resultant is just a fancy word for the answer that we get when we're done. And here's what I've got. So take a look off to the side here. This is a 2 by 2. We're going to add that to a 2 by 2. And we end up with a 2 by 2. And the way we get this first entry right here is we take first row, first column, add it to first row, first column. And we get the answer in the first row, first column. First row, second column, add it to first row, second column. And we get the answer or the element and the answer for the first row, second column. OK? So in practice, it's a little bit easier than that. This is a 2 by 2, and this is a 2 by 2. So when I add those together, I get a 2 by 2. And I've got four elements I need to fill in. Addition is a piece of cake. 6 plus negative 3, we end up with 3. 4 plus 1, we end up with a 5. Negative 1 plus 0, we end up with a negative 1. And 0 plus 3, we end up with a 3. Okay, Super easy like that. This one is a 3 by 1. And this one is a 1 by 3. Luke, can we add those together? No. How come? Dimensions aren't the same. Okay, So if the dimensions aren't the same, then we can't put them together. Okay. That's going to help, right? Okay. So we're just going to write not possible. OK, now, when it's subtraction, you've got your choice on this. I really don't care which you do. Um, I find that people make more mistakes if they're trying to do subtraction all the way through. I prefer to do this. First of all, this has three rows and two columns. This has three rows and two columns. So that means the answer is going to have three rows and two columns. So I've got to find six numbers here. If you want to do 7 minus minus 2 and get 9, that's totally OK. And 4 minus 5 and get negative 1. And 0 minus 3 and get negative 3. Negative 2 minus minus 10, that's going to be plus 10, so that's going to be an 8. And then this is going to be a negative 1 minus a minus 3, so that's going to be a plus 3, so that's going to be a 2. 6 minus 1, we end up with a 5. If you want to do it that way, that's totally OK. Some people find it easier to do this. Everybody watch. I'm going to distribute the negative through to all of these, so I'm going to make this a plus. And if I distribute through the negative, this would be a plus, that would be a minus, that would be a minus, that would be a plus, that would be a plus, and that would be a minus. Now, if you take a look, the nice thing about this is I can just go through and grab the numbers and just look at them and combine them. 
7 and 2, that's a 9. Negative 2 and 10, that's an 8. 6 and negative 1, that's a 5. I don't care how you do it, as long as you get it right and you can keep those straight. Okay, are there any questions there? Okay, flip the page over. Okay, all of that is basic arithmetic, basic vocabulary and stuff like that. We're now going to talk about scalar multiplication. Scalar multiplication is kind of like distributing. We just multiply element by element. So we're going to distribute in and we're going to get each one of the new elements. So here's the deal. If I do 2a, this means I'm going to do 2 times negative 2, negative 8, 5, and 0. Scalar multiplication doesn't depend on the dimensions. We are literally just taking what the scalar, short for maybe scale factor, and we're multiplying everything by that number. So the new one is still going to be a 2 by 2. We just double every single one of them. So negative 4, negative 16, 10, and 0, and that's it. Okay, if we combine scalar multiplication with a little bit of addition or subtraction, we're going to do 4 times a. So this is going to be 4 times this guy right here, negative 2, negative 8, 5, and 0, with plus b. So we're going to write down plus b. That's going to be a negative 3, an 8, a 6, and a negative 5. And what would be cool is, if you can just write down what these are, you can save yourself a little bit of work. If you could skip directly to here, like negative 8, negative 32, 20, and 0, and then add it with this one, negative 3, 8, 6, and negative 5, that's going to go a lot quicker. So I'm just combining these, negative 11, <coughs> combining these, negative 24, combining these, 26, combining these, negative 5, and how'd I do with the arithmetic there? Everybody good? Okay. If we have something like this one, this is the way I would do this one. Okay. If I'm going to do 3a, I'm going to write down 3a as 3 times every one of these. So this is going to be a negative 6, a negative 24, a 15, and a 0. And then watch carefully. I'm going to do a plus right here. In fact, let me change colors on this. I'm going to do a plus. And the reason I'm going to do a plus is I'm going to distribute the negative 3 through to all of those. So now I'm multiplying everything by a negative, so then I can just add them together. So this is going to be a 9. This is going to be a negative 24. This is going to be a negative 18. And that's going to be a positive 15. And the reason I like doing it that way is because then I know this is a plus. Then I just look at the numbers in each one of those spots, in each one of those positions, and I combine them together. Side. Could you just subtract A and B and then multiply the total by 3? On this particular one, because they're both 3, yes, you could. Okay? But if one of these was a different number, then you couldn't. Okay? So you've got you to know this method. Okay? So when I put the two of those together and I get the resultant, Again, it's a 2 by 2 plus a 2 by 2, so I can definitely add them together. I'm going to get a 3, a negative 48, a negative 3, and a 15. And that right there would be the answer. Everybody good? Okay, any questions? Raise your hand if this all looks pretty familiar. Good. You like it that way, right? Okay. How would you do this one then? What do you do? So I just like, I grab that number and I like look at that number and I just like find a number that would equal that. <laughs> okay. I just like, it's How just about we different. do it a little bit more algebra based because that's what we're going to need by the time we're done with this because we are going to learn some new like things in this unit. I'm going to subtract this one from both sides. So I'm going to subtract that. Uh, it's just like subtracting a number. Okay. Done. So that's going to give me negative a equals, let's see what we get here, negative 2 minus a minus 1, so that's going to be a negative 1. 4 minus 5, that's going to be a negative 1. 
5 minus a 3, that's going to be a 2. And 3 minus a minus 7, oh. so that's going to be a plus 7, so that's going to be a 10, right? Yeah, but then you just do a negative, so it's 1, 1, yep. negative 2, negative 10. Very good. So we've got a coefficient of a negative in front here. We're going to multiply both sides by negative 1. So if I multiply both of them by negative 1, I end up with A equals, this would be 1, 1, negative 2, negative 10. Circle that, and then we're done. Okay? Any questions? You're going to enjoy the homework? So many. Yeah. It's okay. Just Yes, multiplication is a pain in the butt, so we saved the best for last. I like multiplication too. Okay. All right, listen up. Okay, of all the things that we've gone over, multiplication is going to come in the most handy because that's the new type of skill that we're going to apply later on in the court or later on in this unit. Okay, they can only be uh, multiplied under certain circumstances, so you might put a star by that. So here are the circumstances. The columns in the first matrix must be the same as the number of rows in the second matrix. So the middle has to be the same. And the resultant, yeah, the inner dimensions have to be the same. The resultant has the same number of rows as the first matrix and the same number of columns as the second matrix. Okay, so that helps us figure out what the dimensions are of the resultant. Now, I've got an example here. This looks messy. It's not that bad. I just want to show you really quickly. This is a 2 by 3. This is a 3 by 2. Like you just heard somebody say, the inside dimensions, those are the same, so we can multiply them. The number of columns in the first one matches the number of rows in the second one. And that means the result is going to have the, the outer dimensions. So this is going to be a 2 by 2. So if you looked at a little algorithm of how to do it, that's how we find the 2 by 2 answers. There are four numbers that we need to find in this 2 by 2. And this is technically how we'd find them. So I'm going to show you what I think is a little bit easier way to do this. Some of you had me last year when I, when I taught this in secondary one. First thing we're going to do is we're going to check the inner dimensions to see if we can even multiply them. We're going to determine the dimensions of the resultant. We're going to draw a bracket, and we're going to draw the number of blank spaces we need for the number of rows and columns and stuff like that. And then I like doing something called the karate chop method. For me, it kind of makes sense. It reminds me what we're looking for. So we're going to go through and do a couple of these see where we get, and then you're going to have an easy assignment other than maybe the matrix multiplication. You do need to practice and be good at this. So here's the first thing we're going to do. 2 by 2, that's a 2 by 2. Inner dimensions are the same, so the resultant is going to be a 2 by 2. So I'm going to draw a 2 by 2 here with four blanks. I've got two rows and two columns, so I've got to fill in four numbers. Okay, so listen carefully. This is the first row and the first column. So what I do is I take the first row and I karate chop it with the first column. So when I say karate chop, I mean this. Works better uh, here than it does showing on a, on a computer screen. I'm going to karate chop this row with this column. Notice where my pinky is. My pinky's right here. Notice where it is right there. <coughs> So I multiply these in kind of a corresponding order. My pinky's on the four, my, my palm's on the, sorry, my pinky's on the one, my palm's on the four, pinky's on the one, palm's on the two. So we're going to do one times one, four times negative two, and then we're going to add them together. So this is a one, this is a negative eight. Add those together, we get, what do we get? Negative seven. Negative seven. So we're going to put a negative seven right here. So negative seven right there. Next one, first row, second column. So I'm still going to take the first row and I'm going to karate chop it with the second column. So if I do that, I'm going to match up the 1 and the 2, the 4 and the negative 1. So that's a 2, that's a negative 4, so we end up with negative 2. This one right here. Second row, first <coughs> column. So I'm going to take the second row and I'm going to karate chop it with the first column. And again, when we say karate chop, I need to match things up. 
I karate chop this row with this column. So notice my <coughs> pinky is with the negative three and up here with the one. So I do three, negative three times one, that's a negative three. Zero times two, that's a zero. So I end up with negative three. And then the last one, of course, is the second row, second column. So I multiply the second row with the second column. That's a negative six. That's a zero. So I end up with a negative six. OK, raise your hand if you remember how to do that. OK, I might just need a little practice. OK, next one. Two by two. What's this one? Two by three. What are the dimensions of the result? Two by three. First row, first column. So I'm going to take the first row and multiply it with the first column. 2 times 1 is 2. 4 times 0 is 0. So this is going to be a 2. First row, second column. So I just kind of slide this over. 2 times negative 1, negative 2. 2 times 4 is 8. So that's going to be a 6 when I put those together. First row, third column, 0. 4 times 5 is going to be 20. OK. Would you finish that, please? I'm going to freeze this. Would you finish off that last row? And you got that last row? What'd you get? Uh, one, one, and five. Raise your hand if you got one, one, and five. Excellent. Luke, what can you tell us about example six? Or sorry, example C. Um, it's two by one by um, two by eight. So? Uh, they can't be multiplied. Very good, not possible. The reason it's not possible is because those inner dimensions are not the same. If they're not the same, then it's not going to be able to be multiplied. Next question, and then I'm done. Is matrix multiplication commutative? No. Great question. What does commutative mean, Mason? Uh, it means that you can switch the sides of the operation and it'll still work, or you'll get the same answer. Still get the same answer. Probably so here's, not. take a look at this. If I took this 2 by 1 and switched places with the 2 by 2, these would switch around. Would you be able to multiply them then? Yeah. Yeah, you would. So there's no way this can be commutative. If I took the two of these and switched them around, if I had the 2 by 3 first, the inner dimensions wouldn't match up, so you'd go from something that can be multiplied by to something that can't. Take a look at the first example, not done yet. If we switch these around, would that work? Yeah, you could do two by it. Two here, two by two here. You could do it. What's that? Exactly. You can multiply them together, but you will not get the same result. So matrix multiplication is not commutative. So do you, would you do a no right there? 